Where does Washington fall in, in that equation with John Wall and Bradley Beal? Well, they have a strong case of being the best. They're both incredibly athletic. Bill can shoot the ball. John Wall is the fastest point guard from end to end. But the Splash Brothers might have a little bit of the edge. But you know what? Wizards, they're on their way. And now, the Washington Wizards starting five. At forward, number 42 from Brazil, Dene. Welcome, sports fans. Thanks for joining us. With Steve Kerr and Clark Kellogg, this is Kevin Harlan, and it's time for... basketball on 2k sports here at the verizon center the fans in washington dc amped up for their wizards and so off the tip it's washington's ball the starters for the utah jazz hayward three and favors the four alec burks is out there with a three and it's gobert in its center beautiful cut to the hoop he's getting anything he wants here already for a lot of players, leading comes naturally, but for John Wall and the Wizards, his teammates had to goad it out of him in order for him to start leading the way. When he did embrace that role, it did wonders for the franchise. Shot clock at five. Good night. Misses off the right eye. Can't get a much better look than that, though. Sure can't. Not one you'd expect him to miss there. Here's Hart. And the three off target. As far as wall and leadership, you know, seemingly been hesitant to, to leave the, his first few years in the league, but it's become more prominent the last few years as he's gained more confidence and he's grown more comfortable in his role. Here's Gobert. Deflects the pass. Beal with the steal. And here's the fast break. Beal leading the way. And the dunk to finish it off. A beauty. And the defense just lets him go there. And once he hit the open floor, there was no looking back. Straight to the rack. John Wall certainly seems to have the respect of his team, doesn't he? Yeah, he does. As a young guy who's running the point guard position, and his teammates have great confidence in him as a leader, and you could see that in his growth this past season. Burks can't get it to go. Really good offensive execution. Nice pick, just couldn't get the shot to go. Boy, you love to see that as a basketball purist. A guy setting a good screen and then getting the shot opportunity. Now here's Wall. Here's Nene, and Washington again with the bucket. Just about two minutes into the game, first quarter of basketball. Burks with it. The dish to favors. And the rebound goes to Nene. Now here's Pierce. That's good. Boy, nice bucket. They're really playing intelligently here. And even though the lead's not large, they've definitely got the upper hand. 
guys. They're looking for a way to score here. Yeah, they've had a tough time getting the lid off the basket so far. Favors against the name. That's good. Well, we'll see if that shot breaks things open a little bit. It's been a slow start. Hopefully that gets them on the right track here, Steve. Outside wall. Shoots. Will not go. This is off the front iron. Jazz trail by six. We're about three minutes into this first quarter. Favors sets the pick for Hayward. Off the screen. And he nails the jumper. And that's why teams emphasize the use of screens and picks. Just to get you some open looks like that one. Beal the pass to Hart. Nene setting the pick for Wall. Nene the screen. And Wall kicks to Nene. Back to Wall. Fires the three. No good. And it's Utah the other way. And here in the first quarter, with a little over three and a half minutes played. There's the screen. And Favors kicks to Hayward. Over to the wing. Off target with his three. Wizards leading by four. Well, guys, the Utah Jazz, one of the better front offices, I think all would agree, in the NBA, narrowly missing the playoffs in 2013. And they saw this loaded 2014 draft class, and Steve, they decided to go young. Well, tough to let Paul Millsap and Al Jefferson just walk away, but, you know, there's a, there's a plan in place, and uh, the Jazz felt like they needed to go young. They didn't want to tie themselves up long-term with contracts that would just lead to mediocrity. So the rebuild is on, and uh, this team does have some talent. So it's Washington now, after the basket by Utah. To the left side wing. There's Bottoms, looking for his first basket still in this. And lots of contact there. Missing the shot, he'll shoot two. The Wizards making the playoffs last season for the first time in the last six years, playing around 500 basketball. Steve, what's the upside for this team, in your opinion? Well, their depth and history of injuries have to be a concern, Kevin. I mean, it, in the East, they'll remain a playoff team, but a contender for the title? I, I don't know. The first one falls. And, you know, part of the depth issue for the Wizards is they struggled to find difference makers in the draft, aside from taking John Wall first overall back in 2010, um, their selections have more than often left a bit to be desired. And that's good as he hits both of his shots. Well, you look at some of the best picks in Wizards history, Earl the Pearl Monroe, Wes Unselk, great players, but not as many great picks, and that's frankly why this has been one of the NBA's less successful teams over the year. Here's Gobert. He kicks it to Hayward. To the wing right side. Burks. And there's another one for the Jazz. He had his head on the swivel and was able to pick out the pass and get the assist. Wizards have gone 50% from the field to this point. Four of eight. Outside wall. Passes it to Hart. The kick out to Pierce. The pass to Wall. High post try. And another miss by Washington. Well, the shot was there for him, and he had to take it. I don't care if he didn't convert. He's got to take that every time. And Utah again with the bucket. So timeout called here. The first for Washington. Here is Wall. Utah with the rebound. Guys, a potent offense right now. Yeah, Kevin, really the offense is flowing quite nicely right now. 
playing with a lot of confidence, just uh, some self-assurance. I, I like what we're seeing. A train the pass to Favors. Nice ball movement by Utah. A shot by Hayward, wide open, and Derek Favors picks up the foul. That is his first foul of the game. Well, he gave the officials no choice there. An easy call went right over the top. Yeah, he's got to go straight up when he's under the boards in that kind of traffic. Can't chest first into the man in front of you. That's a foul. Washington's gone 0 of 2 from deep here. Doris Burke had a chance to catch up with head coach Randy Whitman. Doris, what did he have to say? Yes, Kevin, he's certainly mindful of the shot blocking presence they'll run up against inside. But he doesn't want them shying away offensively. If anything, he said, we've got to be aggressive, but also patient. If we can be deceptive in the way we attack, and there are ways to do that, we can be successful inside. Guys, let's see how successful they can be. Thanks a lot, Doris. And dealing with the sort of defense they're facing is not an easy challenge. No, but they've got a few weapons of their own that they can counter with, so it's not exactly a one-sided battle. Maybe so, Steve, but those weapons are still going to have to perform at a really high level for them to have a chance to be successful. Gortat's checked in for Washington. Porter comes in for Paul Pierce. Utah also making some changes. Exum comes in for Alec Burks. And Trey Burks subbed in for A-Train. And he sinks the second. Utah was such a fixture in the playoffs for so many years, almost decades it seems. But recently, they've not been that kind of a team. And the, the work is cut out for this franchise to get back to being a playoff team. Ingles, guarded by Porter, pocket six, and even three on three break. Here's Beal, and good, coming off the assist by Wall. I'd say that fast break went according to plan. Yeah, it sure did. A good job getting it started, and a better job finishing it off. And for the Jazz and their outlook, they did have some flashes of brilliance to build on, but it won't be an easy turnaround. Now here's Wall. And here's Porter, 11 feet away. That's good. Breaking down some numbers here, the hustle stats for the Wizards. And they've come out in attack mode defensively, applying pressure and stealing the ball repeatedly. You know, another factor in their offense so far has been their ability to convert and score off turnovers. Here's Burke after the basket by Washington. Rebound, Washington. Bottoms got his third rebound on the night. Well, for the Jazz, Clark, it's going to be about being patient, continuing to grow as a team, uh, I guess most observers would think. No, without question. They just have to take it in small steps. Incrementally is the only way it gets done right when you're building a foundation with young, talented players. Nobody goes from worst to first in the conference in one season. And that one's good by Porter. Solid screen right there that freed him up for the jump shot. Here's Burke. Offensive struggles continue. Missing again. Now Porter. Pass the wall. He dishes it to Bia. Feeds it to Gorzon. There's a good screen. And wall. Here we go now. No good with the elbow jumper. It has not been an easy quarter for him. At least offensively speaking. Porter with the screen for Wall. He feeds it to Beal. Goes back up. And good. Coming off the assist by Wall. And that's now six points here for Beal. I think they need to get much more disruptive defensively. They can't just keep allowing these easy baskets. I agree. They need more energy in the post. Maybe some double teaming. They've got to get their defense in gear. The timeout is called first of the game for the Jams. He can't be pleased with all these easy looks they continue to give up in the paint. They're just way too porous as a defense right now. A lot of holes in that defense. It's a good time to use a timeout here. Here's what Washington's going with right now. Chris Humphreys has checked in for Bottoms. Unrise Jr. comes in for Beal. And Miller's subbed in for John Wall. Now, here's Cantor. He hasn't scored yet. That, I'm sure, will change. Novak, the best angles. The feed to Nova. The rebound by Humphreys. Here's Washington now. 
Nine points in a row. Good run for him right now. And that one's good by Gortat. Really not hard to see why they're giving up points on this run. I mean, they've just given them too many looks inside. Yeah, I mean, they're just getting pounded in there. The defense not offering much resistance. They've got to force the ball back out to the perimeter. Bird dishes to Nova. Miller grabs the miss. Wizards leading by 11. Kicks it to Gortat. Plenty of space. And Washington again with the bucket. What a start they've gotten off to. A big lead for them, and we're not even out of the first quarter yet. And it's not just their hot offense here. I mean, they're playing very strong defense, too, guys. That's good from Cantor on the assist by Burke. See the way he times his passes so well. That was a great assist. Washington's gone 0 of 2 from deep here. Miller outside. Humphrey sets a pick for Miller. To the right side. A runner. And a foul on the shot. He'll go to the strike for two. That's his first personal foul. Fourth team foul. Utah foul call. Steve Novak. That's his first personal foul. The Wizards have shot 75% at the line tonight going three for four. At the line for two. First free throw is good. The Jazz making a switch here. Both free throws good from Rice. Here comes Burke. Quiet so far offensively, searching for his first points of the game. Shot is blocked. And as we conclude the first quarter, a one-sided game so far. Washington out in front, ending the first quarter with a tremendous 17-6 run. We'll be back shortly live from the Verizon Center. Exactly a close game so far, but as the second quarter starts here, plenty of time for a comeback. And guys, we've seen a confident-looking Wizards team out there. And the defense has been key in building this lead. They've really clamped down hard. They've done a nice job, Steve. I think challenging every shot, a hand up on every shot. Jazz trail by 13. Andre Miller is out there with Glenn Rice Jr. Then it's Chris Humphreys. Then there's Mane. And it's Pierce in at the small forward position. That's the group on the floor right now for Washington. Here's A train. Six on the shot clock. Burks kicks to favors. No good. You know, so many games are decided by which team wins the rebound battle. And that's held true in this one so far, Steve. And even if it's only a modest advantage that they have in that category, it's still a significant factor. Pass to Nene. And two free throws coming up as he misses that one. Drawing the whistle and a lot of contact there. Nene, a 6'11 Brazilian big man, strong and quick-footed with a nice touch. Um, he's a quality two-way player. And for him, as it is the case with a lot of players, it's about health. You know, over the course of his 12-year career, he's missed almost a third of available games due to injury. And the first one at the line is good. 
We talk about Nene's troubles at times staying on the court, Steve. Some say he's unwilling to play through pain. Yeah, I'm not sure if that's the case. You know, I, all I know is that when he's healthy, he is one of the most effective big men in the NBA, and he had a terrific run in the playoffs last year, particularly in that Chicago series. Nene, I think, an underrated defensive player. Not a big shot blocker, but he has tremendous size and strength, and he can move laterally. So he can really move and cover the pick and roll and switch on to guards, an effective defender. And Washington has possession. After the basket by Utah, Humphreys the pass to Miller. And the layup is good after a nice lead pass. Miller's got his first points in this one. The number of points they've scored in the paint already today is pretty eye-opening, Steve. No, it's off the charts. It really is. And defensively, I mean, they have to start shutting down some of those lanes to the hoop. Here's a train. Dishes it to Gobert. And he banks in the lane. And Nene, for his size and agility, at times somewhat disappointing in terms of rebounding the ball. Throughout his career, actually, his rebound rate has fallen steadily over the last three years. Maybe injury, injuries a factor in that, but they do need more from him on the glass. Good on the shot. Drop back the finger roll. That's a nice finesse move to pull off with the defense all over. Here's a train covered by Miller. Burks dishes to Favors, and that one's good. You talk about the subtle decline for Nene. His scoring efficiency, Steve, also taking a turn for the worse over the last couple seasons. Yeah, still in his early 30s. You know, age shouldn't be that big a factor for a big man, but I guess it's the accumulation of all those injuries, including his knee sprain last season, that may be taking their toll. Here's Rice. Derek Favors making his last shot. He got right to the cup using that screen. Give an assist there, not for the pass, but for the solid screen set on the inside that freed him up and made the layup possible. Utah calls timeout. Let's check out what Doris Burke has for us. Well, thank you, Kevin. There are a lot of questions as to how Dante Exum will develop as a player. He has the skill to be a two-guard, but grew up playing point guard. He would prefer the point, saying, that's the position that has got me here. That's what I want to be going forward. We'll see if the coaches agree, Kevin. We'll see how it plays out. Thanks, Doris. Here's what Washington's going with right now. Bottoms is checked in for Humphreys. Beal comes in for Glenn Rice Jr. And it's John Wall in for Andre Miller. Nice ball movement by Utah. Hayward up top. Pierce covering. And they force the shot clock violation. Great team. And so it's Washington with it. They lead by the biggest margin of the game, 15 points. Pierce with a screen for Wall. Out left to the wing. Nene, the screen. Nice work there coming off the screen. Bottoms got five minutes. They're spraying them home from mid-range today, guys. Yeah, reliable weapon, and that's a sign that the offense is working. They're really moving the ball well, finding good opportunities. Now here's Favors. Passes it to Good. Six to shoot. The 17-footer goes down. Now the shots are starting to fall a little bit more than they did in the first quarter. Yeah, they say it's not how you drive, it's how you arrive in golf. Well, the shaky start can be overcome because now they're starting to heat up. Here's Bottoms. Five points in the game. To the middle. It's deflected. Pierce kicks the wall. From the arc. No good. And it's Utah the other way. They could use a big shot here to get this offense going. Sure could, Kev. I mean, too many empty trips. They need some points. Deal with it. Six points for him. The dish to wall. Here's Hart. The rebound by the Jams. Great defense there. You really have to challenge him at that range. Here's Hayward. Carries it from about 10 feet away. Hayward's got six. Well, he doesn't waste too many of those chances close to the basket. Wall passes to Pierce. Here's Bottoms. 
Hook shot out of the way. And that one's good. He's got seven. Well, it's kind of been the story here today, hasn't it, Clark? Jazz trail by 15. Well, you look at the Wizards. They've got an interesting mix of younger players and veterans. And they had tried to build their team with younger players, but a lack of leadership and maturity and professionalism led them to make some trades for more veteran presence. And you need a nice blend if you're going to win at a consistent level and get to the playoffs. And the Wizards got all the way to the second round as a result. And the defense looking to protect the rim at all costs. Yeah, I like that. A foul to save the layup. Make him earn it at the line. Utah shooting their first free throws of the game. He misses the free throw. And for a Wizards team that has mixed results in the draft, trading for proven veterans, Steve, certainly makes some sense. Yeah, but it may also limit their upside. I mean, that's the trade-off with a solid veteran front line and a young developing backcourt. You have to see if they can continue to climb in the East. Here's what Washington's going with right now. Blair comes in for Nene. And it's Webster in for Pierce. No good at the strike this time. Second, this is also. Well, Derek Favors still developing offensively. I think he's trying to refine his post game and his shooting touch. But the potential is still there. Now here's Webster. Now here's Exum. Evans outside. And the pass to good. Uncovered. Another miss by Utah. And for Favors, most of his shots Clark, coming around the rim. Yeah, strong offensive rebound that he can use his imposing physique to overpower a lot of defenders. Now here's Wall. He kicks it to Webster. Blair a screen on Evans. Here's Hart. Blair trying to get open. Off the left rim and out. He's tried to get it going, but the shots just have not dropped for him today. Pass to Favors. He dishes it to Hayward. Right wing. Exum kicks to Hayward. Another miss by Utah. Great defensive anticipation there to challenge that shooter. Beal can't get it to go. Jazz trail by 15. Exum dishes to Evans. Pass to Goodman. Feeds to Exum to end the drought. And the shot is good. Exum's got himself on the board with three there. Boy, that is just good stuff for him. Nice touch. And Wall kicks to Beal. Blair, the screen. Beal gets a wide open look. Almost, but it rolls out. I thought he'd make that one. That's his range, and the defense nowhere to be seen. Here's Exum. Evans outside. Passes to good. Wide open look. Yes, and a nice assist from Evans. Six points for A-Train. And he's starting to pick things up here after a tough first quarter. Washington calls timeout. Well, Gordon Hayward unable to reach an agreement on a contract extension with the Utah Jazz last season. So instead, it played out in restricted free agency. A player with a lot of admirers around the league. And a big raise, certainly a given for him. And Washington making a change here. Gortat's checked in. So Utah going with an almost entirely new group here. He feeds it to Beal. The kick out to Wall. This is to Gortat. Back to Wall. Five to shoot. Somehow ignores the tight D and gets the layup. And for Hayward in a contract year, upping his rebounding and Steve his passing rates, but his shooting numbers did take a dip. I think that's the key for Hayward's future. He 
Kevin. He, he's got to be very consistent from the perimeter to become an all-star. He's already such a terrific all-around player. Uh, but if he can be a really solid from the perimeter and consistent, look out. And the Jazz with possession. It's a 14-point game. We've got 128 left in the first half. Here's Cantor. That is good. That's pretty much been the norm for them, getting their points off assists and great ball movement. Nice rhythm and flow for this team. Tremendous communication and alertness. Now here's Wall. Blair, the screen. And here is Webster. Back to Wall. And so he earns a trip to the line. Officials saw the contact, and he'll shoot two. John Wall is becoming very efficient running the pick and roll. He's got a nice pull up from the right elbow if the defender decides to sag off or go under the screen. And if they flay up on him, he can blow right by him. So because of his finishing ability, that's a tough cover. The Wizards have been good at the free throw line in this one, 7 of 8. Well, you look back at a season ago, this is a club that made 78% of its shots from the free throw line. So very comfortable with that stripe. You know, success at the line just became contagious for them. A few guys got on a roll, and it carried over to the rest of the team. Here's what Washington's going with right now. Brown is checked in for Blair. Otto Porter Jr. comes in for Martell Webster. And it's Glenn Rice Jr. in for Beal. And so Wall nails both of them. And Wall has some good big men to work with running that pick and roll. Nene, very mobile. Steve, a great finish. Yeah, and of course, Martin Gortat spent a couple years running the pick and roll with Steve Nash in Phoenix. So, you know, he's had some pointers for Wall, too. All in all, you love to see the chemistry that has developed between all those players. Shot clock at six. Here's Cancer. Good. Really, they backed off of working it inside. I mean, they not they haven't gotten it inside as much as they did earlier in the game, and, and I think they've got to get back to that. Andre Miller's checked in for Washington. Well, a major downfall for a young team is often getting road wins, and that was tough for the Jazz last year. So tough, in fact, Kevin. They were the worst in the West when it came to road wins. And that one misses. Jazz were the worst in the West last year on the road, as you mentioned. Having nine wins in all, they really showed their youth and inexperience at times. Well, you knew he'd win that race. Definitely. I mean, that's what you call early offense. Here's Burke following the basket by Andre Miller. Burke with it, and it's Miller picking him up. Right wing. Cantor's shot is off. Wizards leading by 14. Porter passes to Miller. Gorch out with the screen for Miller. Let's it go from 11. Another one falls for Washington. And through one half, it hasn't even been close. Washington out in front, up by 16. And a chance now to send you over to Doris Burke standing by on the sideline. Doris? Bradley, it certainly seemed to be a focus of this team to have a strong first half, which you did. Is this type of intensity something that coaches made a priority? Yeah, most definitely. Uh, we want to hit them first. We weren't going to take any temperatures, as he said, so we're not going to just let guys do what they want to do. We're going to come out and be the aggressor when we get there. Well, you imposed your will, Bradley. Thanks for the time, guys. Thank you, Doris. And we'll be back after halftime for the start of the second half.